Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, happy Sunday. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I'm really glad you guys are enjoying these little chats. You know what I'm saying, my little chat area. So I really appreciate it. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the conversation we had the other day when I was on live because I've noticed since I talked about the whole clubbing situation and how much fun I had in Nashville and how for, the, for me, the majority of the clubs are just not what it was back in the day. Um, I don't know because my phone was right there listening, but I've been seeing that my algorithm is now geared on people who are talking about the club scene and how it's not what it once was. And even Robin and Giselle from Real Housewives of Potomac hit on this as well. So I'm going to react to a lot of these people talking about, you know, the club industry and the nightlife industry basically dying because I definitely believe from what I'm seeing in this day and age that it is definitely dying. So we're going to go ahead and start with this first video here. What's the club like now? They just stand around looking on their phones. Oh. They sit around, they order bottle service, they yeah. look on their phones. They're think about the music that is played today. You can't dance to that music. No, not really. You can't like get do you remember just going to the club? The middle of the, the dance floor is Packed. jam packed yes you're sweat you're not trying to be there looking all you don't we didn't have pounds of makeup on our face no i didn't need it i'm beautiful <laughs> oh <laughs> neither did you but no way. <laughs> all right so we're gonna go ahead and watch this other video they were saying some real stuff like you just came as you were you know what i'm saying so we're gonna watch this other video right now what did the club used to be like baby the club in the early 2000s oh it literally was like the nelly's hot in here video literally you showed up to the club in business casual because we wanted to be taken seriously um barely had any pocket change if you were a lady if you were a, if you were a woman you were getting in free those were back in the days where like all ladies get in free or they get in for five dollars or whatever the case is um getting drunk in the parking lot and a 7-Eleven a big gold cup um, to make sure that we're nice and primed before we got into the club because didn't nobody have money for those drinks. And we danced. Baby, we danced. We didn't care who we danced with. As long as our song came on, as long as the song was good, we were practicing moves at home. We were practicing moves in the mirror. And by the end of the night, if you were not dripping sweat, if you did not sweat your hair out, you did not do it right. This is before social media is the way that it is now. People were not scared. People were just doing the most. And it was a time. It was a time. You would just dance. You would meet new people in the ladies room. You would go mm -hmm. dance again. And then we would go home, either go to sleep, take a shower, go to work, or go straight to work. It was a time. You literally had to be there. All right. Now, what all those ladies are saying is so true. Like, it was like literally a time to be alive. So, let me give y'all a backstory. So, a lot of us have really been clubbing since we were teenagers. Like, in the Twin Cities, there was another guy that was talking about, you know, teen clubs in their area. And it was some who were commenting. Um, the video was viral on Instagram. And so, everybody was naming the teen clubs that they grew up on in their cities. And that's one thing I had noticed over the past few years, especially with, you know, my sons. Like, where do y'all go like there's no teen clubs for y'all or anything they all just chill at the house or at their friends' house but when we were younger we had graffitis and graffitis was in downtown minneapolis so shout out to all the you know what i'm saying the twin city natives and we would come that kind of brought the city together so i lived in st paul you jump on the city bus go from st paul to minneapolis if you were coming from the south side north side brooklyn center wherever everybody met at graffitis and when i tell you that was like a time to be alive we were like probably like 15. and then there was also like valentino's there was like a few clubs like a lot of us started clubbing between the ages of 14 and 16. and you know even then it taught you like, you know, how to carry yourself, how to dress up for the club. Everybody looked cute. You, you knew you had to go shopping at like Debs or, you know, Forever 21, get a cute little dress and some heels. And they had a soda machine cause you know, we were too young to drink. So it was unlimited soda. 
And it was just like, just the bomber songs, like Too Close and, you know, songs like that that would play and we would just be in there having a good time. Now, there were some older people, you know, that would get in there as well. But I remember like, as soon as 10 o'clock hit, they would turn on the lights in the club and say, if you don't have a ride, if your parents aren't coming to get you, remember the last bus leaves downtown Minneapolis by 11. So if you're 16 and under, you need to get ready to go. So then at that point, we knew that was our cue to go to the bus stop and head back to St. Paul. <laughs> But it was like, we just had the time of our lives. It was free to get in. Okay, so nobody paid anything to get in. Free sodas, you know. And yeah, if you were older, like, because they did allow, like, it was like between the ages of 16 to 21. Yeah, I know. So they did have drinks for like the older people. But you know, we just did us as teenagers. We drank the soda and we had a good time. When it was time to go home, we went home. And then, you know, everybody talked about it the next day at school. There was rarely any fighting. You know, maybe every now and then a fight might break out and they would break it up quickly. But literally, it'd be circles of people on the dance floor and then you'd have like the different dance battles. So you'd have like the guys from the north side battling like the guys from St. Paul. And it was just all love. You know what I mean? Like everybody was just having fun. It was like, it was just a vibe. So then we go from there to finally like, you know, turn in 21 and we used to go to Cristal. And Cristal was like in Maplewood area and Cristal was lit as well you know so everybody would go there on friday nights you know you wait in line this was what everybody wore child okay y'all see these pumps i still have these pumps from the early 2000s these pumps cost between literally 10 to 20 dollars charlotte russe okay and had them in every color silver okay green every color but and i still keep these because these are still good quality and you never know when you might have to do a photo shoot but even though they look scary because they have the the heel what people don't realize these are probably the most comfortable shoes to wear because of the platform heel it kept your feet level now everything is about red bottoms and high-end stuff you notice these are just regular black shoes there's no red there's no stunting you pay 10 to 20 bucks for them shoes and you had a good time the only person i know right now who's even kind of bringing back platform shoes is talia sodi and i love these like when i seen these these reminded me of like the early 2000s i literally got these in every color they weren't really cheap but i got them in every color just because i like them and they're super comfortable um, they came in red and green. I just, I love these shoes, but that platform ugh, is everything, okay? Is everything. And it was just about like putting together like a really cool outfit, you know, even like you had like the ravers, you know, you had the goth kids, you put together like a cool outfit. You weren't trying to dress like anybody else. It wasn't about high end stuff. It wasn't about being, you know, Versace down, you know, Prada and all that stuff. It is crazy like how much the club scene has changed. And at first I thought it was just the Twin Cities because I'm like, you know, I grew up here. I remember it from like its inception, teen clubs, to what we have now and which is like barely anything. You know, you have like Escape, you have the Union and the music is just, especially at the Union Child. I do not like the music. It's like, it's not danceable. I don't wanna dance to drill music. I don't wanna dance to pow pow music in the club. There's not a lot of stuff to dance to. You know, it's either country, um, but then we're not a country city. So it's like the, you know, if you're going out for the top 40 billboard songs, nobody's dancing to that. Maybe in Nashville, but not in the Twin Cities. So it's just like, there's not a wide variety. And then when I look at the way the girls come into the club, they just come in dressed any type of way. The guys too, it's like they just rolled out of bed. They're wearing skinny jeans. They just look a mess. Like nobody's looking kempt. Back in the day, there was a strict dress code. And I remember me and my brothers were talking about this to some of like the younger homies. Like, yeah, when you had to go to the club, you had to pull your pants up, belt, nice dress shoes, you know what I'm saying? Nice shirt, because they would turn you away. Even if you were a girl, if you were coming to the club looking any type of way, you would get turned away. They didn't play that. They wanted a certain aesthetic. They wanted you to carry yourself nice. They wanted you to, you know, fit the, the brand. You, you wanted to look good. And especially for the guys, they were very, very strict. You couldn't come in there with super baggy clothes. There were no hats in the club. You know what I'm saying? You came looking presentable and it was about dancing and having a good time. I've seen young girls in the club literally with no shoes on. How did you get in here barefoot? There's no beaches in downtown Minneapolis. How, like, how did you just walk in here barefoot? I've seen girls in the club with flip-flops on, Jordans, you know what I'm saying? You know, the super short booty shorts, no draws. 
just, it's like people don't even try, you know? That outfit, it just, it's not flattering. Even the bottle girls in the club look bored. I've literally spent money on sections to watch the bottle girls come. They don't even do the flames anymore. Remember back in the day it was the flames, it was the fire and all that? Now everything is LED and they're just like, uh-uh, bitch, I done paid over $1,400 for them two bottles. Y'all better dance, twerk, turn up, do something. Even the bottle girls look bored. It's like, to them, it's just like another, you know, like, whatever. I remember when I had, like, my 30th birthday in the club, they were so turned. You know what I mean? They were so turned up. You know, they were like, woo, and it was like all the lights and, the, you know, the flashes and all that stuff. It was such a good time. And it's just like, the last few times I've done bottle service in the Twin Cities, whack, never again. You know what I'm saying? Now, I will say, like, bottle service in other cities tend to be more lit, like Atlanta, like in Houston. But the problem is, I think what has ruined a lot of stuff in the clubs is the fact that it is so expensive. Now, you guys know I'm not a drinker, so I don't know anything about like how much the drinks are until I get a rundown from like Emily or one of my friends. They're like, oh, I spent 20 bucks on that damn shot. It's like, what? You know what I'm saying? So it's like they overcharge. And then half the time, the drinks are not even strong from what people are telling me they're watered down, you know? So it's just, it's ridiculous, like, how much everything costs. And I think what really ruined the nightlife is all this VIP bullshit. They're trying to keep up with celebrities, and they started making it really, really exclusive. You know, the club started excluding regular people and making it more about celebrities and influencers, you know? And it's like... The average person doesn't have the money to blow like an influencer or celebrity. But you guys are trying to charge even before you get into the club. It's $40 to park. You may or may not get valet. And then by the time you walk into the club, it's another 40 to 50 bucks to get in. Even for the women. Like the girl said, back in the day, we didn't pay to go to the club. You could get, literally, everybody was free as long as you got in before 11. If you wanted to be a latecomer, you were getting off of work late, then you knew by the time you got there, you'd have to pay between 10 to 20 bucks. But if you got there before 11, literally every Everybody was free before 11 then they changed it to ladies only ladies were free before 10 and then now it's just like ladies have to pay to get in just like the guys it's crazy but we're gonna go ahead and watch a few more videos a few more reactions here I am very concerned about the future of my culture, which is clubbing. I'm going to write some letters to authorities like soon. This is a dying art. They're forgetting this craft and how to do it. The young girls, they don't even know how to dance on a table in a heel. I was one girl talking about how club music and club culture is dying. Right? I don't even be at clubs and I agree. Look at the top 10 right now. You could barely dance to half the lick. Half the songs barely got a beat to it. Like, bro. like if you throw a pool party, all you could play is throwback. Like what came out in the last two years that you could play? It's summertime right now. And I can't tell you any recent summer song. It's sad all the good stuff came out when I was too young to enjoy a club now we're left with all the sad songs like you can't meet your new friend or your new girlfriend if all the songs playing is sad like you might as well just stay home for real it ain't hot in here, so, so take off all your clothes it's your birthday we gon' party like this your birthday we gon' sip DJ Precise now she was definitely in her millennial bag they are not lying when they talk about the songs in the club they're just not a lot of good songs. Usually when you want to go to a club and go, you know, where there's going to be dancing and fun, it has to be like a throwback Thursday because the stuff that's being played now in the clubs is just like half the words I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. And they're just not a lot of good dance songs that come out anymore. You know, everybody's either sad or depressed talking about a breakup or they're talking about shoot them up, bang, bang. It's like two big extremes, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go ahead and watch a few more videos as well. Now this video, they're saying the same thing is taking place in the UK. So this is not just an American thing. This is happening globally at this point. Nightclubs are gone. They're gone. They're completely gone. Do you know gone. in 2019, there was 1,500 clubs? Nightclubs are gone. They're gone. They're completely gone. Do you know gone. in 2019, there was 1,500 clubs in the yeah. UK. Today, we're sitting on like 600 and they're just getting more and more less. I, I, talk, I talk to my nieces, like my niece is like 24 or mm. whatever. They don't really go clubs. No. They go festivals. festivals yeah. Or if there's a big event, a, a big super club, yeah. once they're, they're booked the tickets for that, yeah. they mostly go restaurants where there's DJs or they go to house parties. That's right. Nightclub culture is gone. Oh, I think it's sad. And it is sad. It's because a British culture for us. I've had parts of nightclubs. Yeah. You know, I've, 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 I've been a partner in nightclubs. Yeah. And, you know, I used to love it. Mm. And you just knew as soon as the pubs come out and the bars come out, mm. that club was filling up that's with four right. or 500 people. At 10 p.m., 10 p.m. That's, yeah. that's not happening. Yeah. That, that, I don't know if it'll ever come back. 
So as you see, it's definitely not just an American issue, but it's happening worldwide where nightlife culture and clubbing is a dying art form, like literally, and it's sad. Also, why do y'all be getting sections at the club? For real. Like, did you just want to have a little separate mini party away from everybody else? If so, why didn't you stay home? You could have controlled the music there and you would have paid way less for alcohol. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, when I was clubbing way back in the day, I'm not that old, but when I was clubbing, I would get sections here and there, not all the time, like occasions. But I would never be in the section. I would be on the dance floor with everybody else partying. Like back then, you weren't clubbing if you didn't leave the club drenched in sweat. The ladies' blowouts were blown out. <laughs> Hair was puffed up, wigs were lifting. Clothes might have been a little ripped. Heels have been broken off. White shoes were now brown and tan because they've been stepped on many times. But you didn't care. You were partying. You were having a great time. But folks didn't care what people looked like back then. Now it's about looking cool and the aesthetic and all that. That's why you go and sit down and be cute. Why? I'm here to party. What? Like you paid $500 to $1,000 to come in here, sit down and look around and pay 300 to 400% more for a bottle of alcohol? What? Or did you just pay 500 to $1,000 for people to see you in a section sitting down when I just paid 20 bucks to get in and listen to the same music you're listening to? <laughs> and I'm having a great time with other people, meeting other people. What is it? All right, so y'all just saw what he had to say, and I agree with a lot of everything he was saying. You know, back in the day, sections were a treat. You did it for like a reason, like your birthday or anniversary, or you know, if your friends were in town, it wasn't to like stunt in front on people. It was for a reason that you got sections. Like I've literally seen people in sections and it's been three people. So three of y'all paid damn near $1,000 to just sit there on y'all's phones. It's just really weird. It's just not the same vibe. And I think part of it is the younger generation, they're not really used to socializing like that. They socialize more or less through their phones, through dating apps, through Snapchat. They're not really used to mixing and mingling like that. Whereas like our generation, we didn't have social media. So you had to know how to come up and approach women, how to approach a man, how to you know have genuine you know, face-to-face -face conversation. I think that's harder for a lot of the younger generation, hence why they don't really prefer clubs like that. They prefer, you know, to be home with their friends or like with their inner circle. They're not really comfortable with meeting strangers from other schools and other, you know, communities and things like that. So I just think a lot of stuff has killed the nightlife, to be honest with you. It's just super expensive, like I said at the beginning. You know, before you can even walk into the club, you're paying for parking. Back in the day, there was no charge for parking, especially on the weekend. You found a spot to park in downtown Minneapolis, you pulled in, and you went and had a good time, or you jumped on the bus, got off the bus, had a good time. Now, everywhere is charging for parking, you know, minimum 20 bucks. I've been in some cities where parking is like 50, 60 dollars. You know, it is insane. Then you get in, you got to pay, you know, to get up in there. Then, of course, bottles, drinks, everything else. And people want to be cute. They want to be Instagram ready. So they don't want to sweat off their hair and their makeup and things like that. That's one thing that I've noticed a lot, that it's such about the aesthetic. It's about sitting in the club and looking like you're having a good time and, you know, looking sexy, you know, for people online. Like you're dancing for people on Instagram and on TikTok, but not with the people that are in your physical presence. It's just weird. It's just really, really weird. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking a selfie in the club or, you know, doing a quick dance or being like, you know, we turning up, nothing wrong with that. But if you're doing that the whole two hours, that is just weird to me. It's like, are you gonna get up and eventually mix and mingle and have fun? Or are you just gonna sit there and act like none of this exists right now? It's weird. And then you also have to deal with like, you know, weird, passive aggressive people, hostility. You know, everybody's looking at everybody's outfit out the corner of their eye and trying to figure out, you know, what brand they're wearing. And, you know, it's like a weird energy. It's not as fun. Whereas like back in the day, girls would come up to each other and be like, oh my God, your outfit is so cute. I love your shoes. Where'd you get your shoes from? You would have whole conversations in the bathroom. You know, girls would be looking out for each other like, oh, girl, you sweated your hair out. You know, you're trying to like, you know, bobby pin her hair and fix it up. You know what I mean? Like we kind 
kind of looked out for each other. And now it's just like this weird competition whose ass is the fattest, whose waist is the smallest, whose titties are the biggest, you know, and it's just, it's not the same vibe that it was like back in the day. Not saying that girls weren't competing for guys back then, but now it's more about everybody look at me, look at my manufactured body, as opposed to, you know what I'm saying, look at my cute outfit that I put together from, you know what I'm saying, Forever 21. So it's like definitely a different vibe. Then you got guys who just sit around, they just hold up the wall, they're just sitting there mean mugging, arms crossed, they wanna be the toughest in the club. And it's like, dude, go get a drink, chill and dance. Why would you come to hold up the wall? I never understood people who go out and they want to hold up walls as opposed to like dancing and mingling. Like back in the day, you got clowned if you stood against the wall and just try to play tough. You got clowned. No girls were paying you no mind. You look goofy. We're sitting here trying to holler at the guys who are dancing. We're sitting here trying to holler at the guys who are, you know, coming up behind us, you know what I'm saying, freaking up on us, having fun. The guys who were picking us up over their, you know, shoulders and stuff like that. Those were the fun guys. We didn't give a damn about the guys who were like super buff in the corner with their arms crossed. We gave no care about them. And it was usually only like five of them, okay? Everybody else, all the other guys were dancing. Even the hood dudes were dancing, sea walking, having a good time. They were not holding up walls. And I see a lot of that now where guys just, you know, sit there and try and look tough as opposed to having fun. So I think a lot of things have destroyed the nightlife industry, you know, and especially in certain cities. You know, certain cities have become very elitist. You know, LA, Miami, Atlanta very much is turning into that. Houston, from what I saw last month. Um, you know, this whole guest list. You know, if you're not on a guest list, if you don't have an Eventbrite ticket, like, what happened to, I'm just coming from out of town, I see a line of people, it looks like it's lit, we jump in line, show your ID, maybe pay you know, a club fee, and you're let in. Not everything is about a guest list, a RSVP, it's like, for what? This isn't a fucking birthday party, it's a damn club. Just let people in. If I'm willing to spend money and come into your club, and I look cute, let me in. I don't wanna be like, oh, my, you know, you gotta find my name on a guest list. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's gotten very, very elitist. And let's not forget about the colorism in places like Miami. And that is why I hate clubbing in Miami. When I was down there in 2017, me, my sister, and y'all met my best friend, Sharnetta. So we all went down to Miami for my birthday. And I think we we're trying to get into live, I don't know, one of them big clubs or whatever. And, you know, we're near the front of the line and you could see the bouncers literally not trying to make eye contact with us because we were dark skinned. They were literally going through like scope, scoping out the line and looking for like the racially ambiguous and the Latina chicks who were way behind us and bringing them up to the front of the line. And I had never experienced that before. I'm like, what the fuck? And we were looking cute. Okay. We were looking cute as hell. And it was just a disrespect. So for me, I feel like I would never spend money to ever, ever again go to a club in Miami if that's how they treat dark-skinned women. One thing I'm not gonna do is beg you to take my money. You don't want my money, I'm too dark to come into your club, fuck you in your club, okay? And I'm saying that with my whole chest, honey. So that's another thing too, is not only the superficialness, where they want everybody to look a certain way, have a certain aesthetic, a certain body, even skin tone plays a big part in a lot of these major clubs. LA too, LA's not innocent from that as well. You know, um, I'm when I wanted to throw my birthday party in LA, they demanded to see my Instagram page. And at the time my Instagram page was private and the guy was like, well, why is your page private? Are you not cute? And I'm like, it's private because I'm getting trolled and I don't feel like seeing a bunch of troll comments. But it's like, why? what does my Instagram page have to do with me, you know what I'm saying, trying to reserve a spot in the club? And so, Literally, I had to make my Instagram page public. Then he went through my pictures and determined that I was cute. And then he wanted to see the Instagram pages of everybody I was inviting every female that I was inviting. So then they had to give me their Instagram pages and I had to send it to the club. And then they approved it. Now, granted, everybody in LA, like especially if you're in the industry, you know, most people in LA, their bodies are on point. You know, people are acting, they're modeling. You know, LA girls have a certain aesthetic. So I expected all of my girls in LA to get in. But what kind of bothered me is that like a lot of my Midwest friends, they're not into all that shit. A lot of my Midwest friends, they're a lot thicker, more heavy set. They're not into a lot of like heavy makeup and hairdos and high end bullshit. So imagine if I wanted to invite some of like my childhood friends from the Midwest to come for my birthday in LA, or you tell me they wouldn't get in because they don't look like models because they're not 5'11 and a size two. 
So it's it's insane. I think the, a lot of these clubs shot themselves in the foot by trying to be overly exclusive and trying to turn away regular people. No, Miami is such an aesthetically demanding, superficial place. Like this is a news to anybody. Like it's known that a lot of clubs will deny even like the baddest girls just because they don't fit the aesthetic for the night. I've literally seen like 10 out of 10s getting denied like from these like mid ass clubs just because like they're not the vibe for tonight it's like kind of crazy or any woman that is overweight if you're coming to miami to go clubbing please disclaimer i'm not from florida um i do not live in florida but my cousin and some of her friends that we had went to vendom with are from florida and they never experienced any type of problems when they have went to vendom so that's why we went there in the first place so we go to vendom and um, we get on the line because we know, um, well, my cousin knew a promoter and he wanted to get us in. I mean, he got us inside. So as we're like in the line and handing our IDs over, they let um, my cousin and her friends in. But like once it was my turn to get my ID, they didn't even look at my ID. They were just like, stop, um, give me one second um, and just move to the right for me. And I'm like okay why like they they didn't even look at my id yet they were just like oh can you step to the side for me for a second i'm like okay so they're like looking back at me and they're like confused and they're like um what's the problem and they're pointing towards me and the promoters like kind of telling them like you need to get inside you need to get inside like just move inside and then i'll go get her because they were like telling my friends and my cousins like oh like if you don't go in and sit down, you can't come back in because Summer Walker was performing that night. Um, and I guess they were like being a little hard on entry and re-entry or whatever the case may be. So they were just like, you need to like just sit, sit down and I'm gonna go back outside and get her and I'm gonna figure out what the problem is. So they're like, okay. And he's kind of being like a little harsh, like, oh, you need to sit down. Like, you're not coming back in. If you die not sit down, I will go get her. I'm going to handle it. I'm going to handle it. So they're just like, okay. So he doesn't come outside to get me. So I'm just standing there for like good five minutes, whatever, like looking around, looking for the guy. I do not see him. And my cousins are on the phone with me calling me. My cousin and my friends are on the phone calling me like, where are you? Like is he outside because we don't see him in here and he said he's coming to get you and i'm like no he's not so they get frustrated i'm frustrated so they're just like we're leaving never mind like you know what i'm saying it's fine so as they're leaving they're asking people um like some of the workers inside and like in the little area like where they're checking for the ids and stuff like what was the problem and they literally well honestly a lot of people were just trying to like ignore the question and just be like keep walking out keep walking out like if you're leaving leave you know what i'm saying and they're trying to ask people like what's the problem though like why is nobody saying nothing because they're not telling me nothing either on that little line that i was on like they were just kind of like i'm like asking them like okay so like is anybody gonna tell me why y'all pull me to the side and everybody's just looking at me like i'm boo boo the fool and they're just like either ignoring me or they're just not answering the questions so i'm getting mad too so eventually one person that my cousin asked like what the problem was finally told her that the reason why i couldn't get inside was because i was too dark and that they want a certain type of people in the club today and that the owner was being very strict about who they let in and who they don't let in so you have to meet that certain standard to get inside and it's crazy because I noticed that I wasn't the only one that got like rejected to go inside. Like they also weren't letting anybody of like a certain body type inside. Like they only wanted people that looked like, I guess on the skinnier side, the more slim side, or like if you had that like Coca-Cola shape vibe going on, they let you in. But if you were just the slightest bit of not on that standard that they wanted inside, you were not getting inside. They were just sending all those people that didn't meet that standard to the right, but they weren't saying anything. Thing. they were trying to make it seem kind of like oh we're gonna let this side get an entry in in a second have you ever been kicked out of a club because you plus size have you ever been told you can't come in the club because you're plus size have you ever been escorted out of the club because you plus size i have i've even been called kool-aid because i had on a red dress and I was trying to go hang, hang out with my friends and they call me Kool-Aid. <laughs>
And back in the day, it was not about your look. You know what I'm saying? You might run across some people who may not be like the most attractive people in the club, but trust me, they were the funniest. They were the coolest, the best dancers. So maybe you weren't like the guy with like, you know, the bomb body and super buff and stuff like that. You might have been skinny and scrawny or short. You still pull girls because of your personality, because you could be out there dancing. You knew how to have fun. It wasn't always about the physical appearance. And I feel like that's what a lot of these clubs have turned into nowadays, especially in these major cities. That's why I was so surprised with the time that I had in Nashville, because that really reminded me of clubbing in the early 2000s. There were people there that were all, all types of shapes, races. They were having fun. They were line dancing. You know what I mean? Nobody was worried about social media and taking pictures and doing videos. They were just living in their element. And it was so dope to watch. You know, you saw black cowboys. They were out there dancing together and, you know, having fun with each other. And I really love that vibe. And that's the vibe I try to put together when I do my events. Y'all know, like when I run out clubs and do stuff for like my tea sipper live events, it's all of us. Everybody's welcome. I don't care about your size, your aesthetic, none of that. And we have fun and we turn up. And people always tell me like that's the most fun they've had in years because they stopped going to the club. It's expensive. People are mean. You know, it's a lot of funny energy. But with the tea sippers, we have a good time. We turn up. You know, we just have fun. It's not about all the excess BS. Ain't no party at the tea sipper party because the tea sipper party don't stop. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Baby, you better get you one of these, okay? And so for me, I feel like that's why the nightlife is dying. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. Why do you guys think that the nightlife is dying? And do you feel like it will ever come back? Because I don't even hear anybody talking about raves anymore. Even in Vegas. I remember going out to Vegas in my 20s and just having a ball out there. And I'm even hearing that the nightlife in Vegas is not what it used to be either. It's a shame because the nightclubs were definitely like so many memories. I still have a lot of pictures because back in the day we printed out our pictures. I still have pictures of us, you know, in the club with friends, having a good time and things like that. And it's really sad that this generation, Generation Alpha, you know what I'm saying? I could say some of Gen Z. Gen Z, you know, they get out, but I don't think Generation Alpha will even understand what clubbing is or will even care because they're just so stuck on their iPads. So let's go ahead and get the discussion pop and I look forward to hearing from y'all. Um, I want to know what y'all's thoughts are. Why do you guys feel like the nightlife industry is dying or that it's not what it used to be? And you know, did you guys have teen clubs in your city? And if so, what was the name of y'all's teen club? Because graffitis, I swear, lives in my head rent free. Those were just so many good memories when I think back to a time and space. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get the discussion pop. In. I look forward to reading y'all's comments and I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy the rest of your day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.